Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Little White Lie Movement. This is all about the lies that we tell ourselves about getting old and learning to love the age that we're in. Each week, I invite my guests to share their stories, expertise, tools, and tips on how we can all embrace our authentic selves, talents, and gifts, and say yes to the Little White Lie. Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here. I am so excited. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am today. We have like the best show ever coming today. So let's go over a couple of, of housekeeping things just so that you know. If you're here on replay, I love that you're here on replay. Make sure you put your comments down below there because I know that Sandy and I are going to go in there and, and respond and, and talk to you and it will live forever. Um, I would love for you right now to go down to your uh, the share button on your phone or on your screen and share it out. Share this show out to everybody and anybody. We want to bring lots and lots and lots of people into this show. And in the meantime, let's connect. So you can check out the website at thelittlewhitelie.com. Make sure you do that. And whenever you comment, use the hashtag littlewhitelie. That's how we're going to be able to track you and find you and make sure that you are there. So without further ado, let's talk about what's going to happen today. Today's question is, what's it like being a woman in a man's world? Breaking through the glass scene. And today, I'm so excited to welcome Captain Sandy Yon. You may know her as the captain from Bravo's hit series, Below Deck Mediterranean. She has over 27 years of leading yacht charters all around the world, and Captain Sandy is one of a handful of female captains in the yachting industry. She's weathered it all, from being chased down by pirates to containing major fires on board. She's also survived a life-threatening motorcycle accident and even cancer. Her undeniable resilience and brilliance have helped move her to the top of her industry. And yet I also think that you're gonna find her to be humble, thoughtful, a visionary, and who is passionate about giving back and having lots of fun. So without further ado, Captain Sandy Yon, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, I'm really happy to be here. And I love the introduction. Well, uh, you know, I could have gone on and on, quite frankly, because you are very, very accomplished. And, and I've already told you multiple times how much you inspire me by everything that you've done. And I'd like to start the show right now. I'm just going to jump right in. Sandy, what is your little white lie? Oh, my. My little white lie is I think that I can still do the things that I could do when I was 12, 15 years old. And I really can't. So I want to jump a fence. You know, I want to run like I was 12, white lie. <laughs> and Sandy, I think you're freezing a little bit over there. So okay, I'm gonna no. ask Sandy to go ahead and refresh her screen and come back in. And as we're doing that, I wanna say hello to all of the uh, people that are down here in the comments over here. We have all some great comments. Ahoy, Captain Sandy. Yep, let's go put that up. I love that. <laughs> and uh, Sandy will be coming back in. I'm going to go ahead and bring her into the broadcast right now. And she's back. All right. You know, it's really bad weather here, so hopefully I don't freeze anymore, but I'm with you. But if you. you do, we have very patient people, and people do understand. Right. It's only, we're only as good as our technology today. So let's talk about your little white lie. You got cut off. Okay, so my little white lie is, is I'm 52 and I still think I'm 12. And my sister can attest to this because every time I want to meet her, it's always at Disney World. And I don't know, it's like, I just really want to be able to, you know, have the energy of a 12 year old. So I continue to move like that and I just simply can't. I love that, I love that. I want to be 12 too. No, not so much, not so much. The but energy, energy. The energy of a 12 year old. Yes. So, you know, before we like dive into the question, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This show was supposed to happen last Tuesday and you got called by the powers that be, right? Bravo sent you over to a really great show, What Happens Live, right? Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. And now you're sliding into my couch. That's very cool. But I have a question I'm sure our listeners want to know. What was it like being on Andy Cohen's show? It was phenomenal. The best part was meeting Anthony Hall. 
who I grew up with, watching oh, him. You know, cool. Lamp, National Vacation, Chevy Chase, 16 Candles, Breakfast Club. Meeting him was amazing. And then Andy, of course. Yeah. He seems like a really cool guy. He was very cool. Very humble. So I have a question to ask you because you actually are a woman in a man's world. What is it like being a woman in the man's world? And is it, I mean, do you feel like there's a glass ceiling? Did you break the glass ceiling? How do you feel about this? Yes. You know, I fell into it. I was a kid that was lost and I had an owner who believed in me and I didn't think about it. I just went for it because I only worked on one vessel. As I advanced in my career, I found it difficult to move. I, hey, listen, I was turned down for a couple jobs because I was a woman. And I thought, why? I'm great at navigating. It's a skill set. I learned it. And I'm also great with decision making. So I wasn't, mm -hmm. I was curious why I was turned down for the position because I was female. And I think it's psychological. So how did you, how do you respond to something like that? I mean, because that, that's kind of like... You're not, you can't change, you're a woman, and more power to us as women, right? So do you, did you get mad? Did you, did you just walk away? I mean, how do you respond to something like that? Uh, the yacht manager was honest with me. He could have been dishonest and said they found another captain, but he told me why, which I was very grateful. Mm -hmm. So I didn't take it out on him. And I thought, wow, I guess we just need to go back in and re-educate the people who think that a woman can't do this. And ah. so I reached out to a friend of mine and we had a women in yachting um, seminar at the Monaco Yacht, Yacht Club. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So guys, I'm trying something different this time. I'm going to um, put up a frame that says, it's time for a comment. And I'm looking through the comments right now and I'm gonna throw up a comment and put it right on the screen. And let's see what the comment is. She says, uh, Kat says, I'm so curious. What are some of your go-to inner game tools to keep yourself moving forward? My go-to inner game tools are everything I learned after I stopped drinking, which was stop, breathe, and think of the best solution. So every time I don't react, I just stop and take a breath. And I think about what's going to be my end result. A right. lot of times, say I'm in a navigation situation where I lose the bow thruster or the engine, I have clients watching me, that's when I just take a breath and I think I have to do it. And so I do it. That's awesome. I see that we have some guests down below that actually want to come on live with you. You're good with that, right? We're going to bring yes, some of people course. on. Absolutely. So I'm notifying, I'm bringing in uh, Joey Garrity and she's just popped into the show. I'm going to go ahead and put us on three and uh joey joey is a visibility and an influence influencer this woman is she rocks and joey what's your question for sandy can jo joey can you hear me i can't hear joey we can't hear joey can't i'm so i'm going to drop her off and she's got to work on her microphone and i'm going to go ahead and let's bring in lauren solomon lauren's coming in Hey, Lauren. Hi there. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi, Lauren. So, Hi, and Captain La Sandy. <laughs> so Lauren is an image um, and uh, stylist, for lack of a better word. She, it's the whole thing. She does the whole thing. And I know that you got a great question for Sandy. What's your question? So my question is, in, the ter in terms of a glass ceiling, did you actually find that it was always men you were challenged by? Or were there other women who didn't necessarily support your advancement. I found that some women were jealous, um, which is, you know, not great, but oftentimes, I don't know, like for me, I didn't, I really didn't think about it being male or female. All I did was I kept my eye on the ball. I knew what my goal was and I never looked side to side. When I found, if I was docking the boat where I found it was most comical, is all the men would run outside and watch me. So I just blew them a kiss or winked at them. And what can they do? So I docked the boat. I think they were waiting for me to crash. 
they, it's very funny having been a passenger on boats where the men weren't doing such a great job of docking. <laughs> I would have to think twice. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your question, Lauren. I'm going to drop you. you back down into the lobby. And, um, you know, I was on the show the first season. I was on Below Deck Mediterranean on the first season. And I remember so many things, like we were called the Golden Girls. And, you know, and one of the things that really strikes me is that we had to wait to the end to actually watch the show to see what they actually were going to put on the television. And we found out after the fact that there was another cast member that we never met because he was sick and apparently right. had gone to the hospital. And so when the show started coming out, I remember all of us ladies, the Golden Girls, kept saying, who is that? <laughs> because he wasn't there. So were there situations like that for you where now you're watching the show and you're saying, I don't even, I don't know how they did that. <laughs> Uh, absolutely uh, not, because I am in the middle all the time, and I'm a people person. So I go down in the crew mess. I have dinner with the crew or breakfast. I like to see their eyes in the morning. I like to know their mood. And if I see that they're down, I'll talk to them. So I always want my crew to be happy, a happy crew, a happy boat, a happy client, and, a happy and captain. And a happy captain. And and all, all that I read about you, and I know that our viewers probably could put the comments up there about that as well. They talk about you being strong but but compassionate and, and that you that you you're you're a woman. And and that's that's one of the things that I think is really interesting. I think as a woman you probably bring something slightly different to the table because you're a woman. What do you think about that? Absolutely. I Yes. And, you know, I'm going to just kick it back to my sister because I watch her in her setting and she's so kind and gentle and soft and but yet runs this amazing school with all these people under her. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm at sea. I have these crew and I think women are great at multitasking. I think um, we're more compassionate. We actually see the big picture, whereas men are more, you know, they have, they, they have those blinders on, uh, yeah. from my experience that I've noticed. Uh, so yeah, I think we're better leaders. I think we need a woman president. I owe oh, everybody who agrees, raise your hand. <laughs> okay, guys, I think it's time for another comment. I'm going to bring one up. Um, so actually, this is a comment from Jill. Thomas, who says, Captain Sandy Yan, we love that you always give back. What passions or charities do you love to get back to? Oh my gosh, could I not have planned this even better? So I was going to bring this up later, but since this has been asked, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring us back in. And I am going to remove this because let's talk about what you're passionate about. You have a special passion and um, you already mentioned it with your sister, but let's just jump in. What are you passionate about? JSA, my sister's school. So I saw my sister take her, you know, um, her son was born with um, diagnosed with autism, switch her career path, which she had a great, I think she was a top analyst for Johnson and Johnson or senior analyst. I'm not sure. Somewhere. I know she had a great career path. She left her career for fear for her child mm -hmm. and started a school with two students. To see what she's done with her own child from, Nick was a runner. Nick, he was, <laughs> let's just say I was chasing Nick a lot. To <laughs> today where he actually looks you in the eye and the transformation she's made in his life and other, other families' lives and how she helps the community, I'm behind her. So that's, and at this point she's outgrown her school and she needs to build a bigger school. She needs property. So we have to raise the money for that. And that's my, that is exactly what I'm going to do with this platform. And we're going to help you because I'm going to actually put a link up here and I'll put it into the description after the show. This is a place that you can go make a donation, a small, a large, however, whatever your heart says to you, click the link and, and go make a donation to help this. And one of the things that I want to do right now, is bring in another person from our uh, community. Her name is April Roga. Hi, April. Hi. Hi, so, April. 
So one of the reasons that I'm glad April decided to come and join us is that she has um, an autistic child who's seven wow. years old. And um, you know she understands the challenges and was very, very excited to meet you, I know, because of what you're doing with your sister's school. So April, what's your question? I just wanted to find out more about what you're doing, not just with your sister's school, but to connect um, the parents together that are maybe struggling to get out there in the world. They're so isolated. And like you said, your sister's son is a runner. Um, so a lot of parents are stuck at home and they don't really have community. You know, that's a really good question because I've witnessed my sister and her husband, their lives are dedicated to their child. Uh, Michelle's created these uh, programs that allow, uh, and that's actually her goal is to create this lifespan program with her school. So parents can actually get out of their house, leave their child at the school. I don't really know I've witnessed. And so I just watch how passionate she is to helping other families like yourself. And I guarantee you she could answer that question a lot better than I can. So if Michelle, if Michelle is actually watching the show today, if you want to put a comment up into the, uh, the screen, I will, I will look for it and pop it up. Thank you so much, April, for joining the show. I'm going to drop you on out. And I'm also going to add Kim Harris to the show. I'm, you guys, you're, you're, you're just making me so happy to have so many people that have, have showed up to talk to this amazing woman. Kim, Kim Harris, what question Hello. do you have? Hi, well, Kim. hi, Sandy. How are you? Hello, Karen. Thanks for inviting me. Um, Sandy, I'm a little curious as to uh, what you think the, um, you know, the ideal way to introduce what you do to more African-American women. Um, I know that, you know, there are very few that even know that they have an opportunity to get into this field. And so I'm just interested to hear your insight on that through Facebook Live experiences like this. When I was on Steve Harvey, I was on the Steve Harvey show. He also asked that same question. And I thought by being on your show, I'm able to reach out to every viewer that's watching this and say, guess what? This is an industry that's not closed. It's actually open for anyone who wants to get into the maritime world. In fact, we have a deficit of crew with the boats, the amount of vessels that are being built today. And it's, a, it's an amazing industry. And it's just not working on a boat. There are designers, naval architects, and you don't have to be a college graduate to go to this. You know, there it's sort of vocational training. And because awesome. I'm not a college graduate. In fact, I was kicked out of high school. So I was wow. one of those kids. So this wow. industry, I would say just grabbed me, held me, and molded me to the person I am today. And it, Awesome. I have to say, I feel like I'm in the best industry in the world because the people were such a, it's a big industry. Mm -hmm. We're close. And that's the beautiful thing. Awesome. Thank you, Sandy. Such a great question. Thank you, Kim. I'm going to drop you on out and we're going to continue the conversation. I have a question. So have you ever been discriminated against? Were you just, I know you, you mentioned one scenario earlier, but do you feel that things that you do that you are, you're going to be discriminated against? Any situations? I'm sure uh, because I was female. Do I, was I aware of it? Only when the manager told me. Other than that, no, they're very good at hiding it. So when, when we talk about breaking the glass ceiling, breaking through the glass ceiling, I've had people that literally have never heard that expression before. They don't get, you know, does that really mean there's a glass ceiling? That it's an expression, guys. It doesn't mean there's actually a glass ceiling. But what does that mean to you, Sandy, when we talk about breaking through the glass ceiling and the things that you feel that you've done that actually has done that? Um, hey, listen, I just stayed focused. I, and I still don't today. Even... Is the sound okay? Yeah, we're getting, I think the storm keeps coming and going, and every time you get a, a whoosh of wind or something, your connection, but you're okay. You're good. Okay. Every time, I just stay focused on my priorities. And yes, people question me, people challenge me. I just 
keep my eye on the ball. That's what I do. I don't really care what they think, how I'm, in fact, like I was on bravotv.com this morning. One of the questions was it's similar to this. And I thought, okay, I don't actually think about male or female. I just think about, I have a job to do and I do it. Mm -hmm. And whoever gets in my way, I try to navigate around that. And that's really what I do. And I just want to say, if you want to get in this industry, Google maritime schools. That's all you have to do. And then just sign up. And there's one. You take that class. Sandy, as you're talking, I'm going to ask you to refresh yourself again because now your sound is completely gone. Go ahead okay, and refresh. Maybe it's my headpiece. I'm going to just get off of it. Okay. Maybe it is the headpiece. But you have to unplug it then. Now we can't hear you at all. And she's out. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm going to take a question or actually a comment, something that she doesn't actually have to um, respond to. And here's a question. Um, now here it is. Actually, it's more of a comment. Uh, Michelle, and Michelle is Sandy's sister, and she writes, thank you, Karen, for highlighting Captain Sandy as Bravo's first female captain. It's my pleasure, Michelle. And again, thank you for sharing your sister with us because we are hoping to raise some funds for the Alzheim for the uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, Alzheimer's, uh, I'm sorry, Jacksonville School of Autism. You guys live in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Um, and I'm waiting to see, oh, here she is. I'm bringing her back in. And she's... Back. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Yay. <laughs> so I'm going to bring in another guest. Uh, let's see who we got here. We have Lisa Lamont coming in. Sandy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Karen. So, Thank you for giving me a chance to come on. Lisa's a psychic. Uh -huh. So I'm curious to find out what your question is, Lisa. Well, my question is, were you a tomboy growing up? Because I find a lot of the women who are successful in their 40s, 50s, and 60s were. And so that was my question for you. Of course I was. I like, I mean, you know, we grew up in the country. And yeah, I worked as a kid. And then uh, my parents divorced when I was eight. And and then I, you know, was back and forth with my dad this summer. And my mom, you know, school time. But yes. Awesome. I feel like we were child slaves as kids. Yes, I can tell. <laughs> and what was it like seeing yourself on on the television when the when the show aired? What was it like seeing yourself on screen? I was surprised how calm I am, and it made me feel really confident. Actually, it's like wow, I handled that really well. And you did. I also like the fact that I'm not a yeller. I don't fire people. I believe in them. I believe it takes an effort. I think it takes more energy and effort to to not fire someone and you know shift their way of being than it is to just say out of you're out of here. Love Beautiful. that. Love Thank that. You. Thank you, Lisa, for joining us. I'm gonna bring one more person in and then we're gonna finish up the, the broadcast. I have some other things to share with you. We're bringing in Susan Jacobs. Hey, Susan, how you doing? Hi, I'm great. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Captain Sandy. So, and I'm having a storm here too, so hopefully you can hear me. So, and I love that you're all about Ask for Help. I think that's wonderful. So I'm an image and wardrobe consultant, and I wondered, because I read that you were worried at some point about being taken seriously, what will I have to do? Did you find on your way up, did you ever have to compromise the fact that you were a beautiful woman in terms of being seen, being heard, and sort of not sort of keeping the shadows, the fact that you are a woman in terms of physicality. Oh my God, yes. You know, oh. I'm just gonna give an example of the Red Sea Fire. Uh, we took the boat to Italy, very macho country. Yeah. And I'm at the head of the table. There are probably 15 men surrounding the table and we're negotiating the, uh, it's a 5 million euro deal. The <laughs> shipyard owner would never address me. So I just said, okay, thank you his attention. So I stood up. I said, I'm, this meeting's over because you are actually not even addressing the person who makes the decision. So when you, 
if you want to do that, then give me a call. Otherwise, I'm going to the shipyard Alpha Marine, which is next door. Wow. He, he switched gears like that. Good for you. Woohoo! That's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that, that is one of those. Yeah, totally. Great, is. Thanks. Great, great question. Awesome. Great question. Thank you, Susan. Um, I'm going to actually pop up another uh, question because... Um, find this and I'm going to solo it. So this is from April Roga. Um, hearing Captain Sandy speak about the challenges that her sister has faced with her son and wanting to have more time to invest to help her son brought tears to my eyes before I came on the screen to ask the question. My dream in life is to leave my eight to five job and be a full time entrepreneur so I can work more with my nonverbal son. And oh. it's problems like your sister's. That's going to help. Yes. That's I mean, awesome. uh, honestly, I was about to cry. So I just had to like shift gears because I didn't want to cry because I just believe in my sister so much. And, and your sister, Michelle Dunham, I mean, she has just moved mountains to do what she's doing. And um, I want to thank you for being on today. Michelle, I'm going to remove this because it's blocking our faces. Um, and I put the link in the chat. So if you scroll down, the link's there. And then after the show, I'll put the link to donate up above as well. Um, if you want to stay in touch with Captain Sandy, we have multiple ways that you can follow her on social media. You can follow her on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash below deck Cap Sandy. You can see it up there. And if you want to follow her on is this your Twitter or your Instagram? One Sandra and one Sandy. That's my Twitter. So this is Twitter. Go ahead and tweet Sandy because I know personally that she, if you put her and you tag her, she's going to tag you back and she's going to respond. She is. She really understands what connection and relationships are about on social media. I firsthand have experienced it. So go ahead and try it out. You're going to be surprised. And if you want to go visit her on Instagram, it's at Captain Sandra Yon. That's a little bit different. So do that. And any last thoughts that you want to share with our audience? You know, I am going to do this, I believe, tour. I don't know. I got a website. It's CaptainSandyYon.com. And, yeah, like sign up because I'm going to go around the country speaking about how I became a yacht captain. Just like with you. And you're going to do that through this, I believe, right? That's correct. Because like my sister, like me, anyone that really believes that they can do it. And that's what I love about this country. Because I've visited a lot of countries. Is that America is a great country. And I love that we are given the opportunity to believe in anything. And whatever we believe in, we can do. And I just watched that movie. Um, uh, oh, my God. It's a war movie about this guy where he doesn't carry a weapon. Hacksaw, Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. I watched okay. the airplane. And he believed. He believed in people. And he just kept saving lives. And so, I don't know. That's sort of where I am and the I Believe Tour. I love it. I love it. And we're hoping that we're going to bring um, Captain Sandy up a along the coast of California because I know she's going to be down in San Diego for a while. And I know she's going to come up here to Napa because, well, you know, there's wine and, you know, there's wine. So we're going to be getting her up here. So you want to just make sure you keep your eyes peeled on the stuff that I put out there because that is going to be happening. And I just realized, Sandy, I never did my reveal. So I have to do the reveal. I'm going to turn my head like this. Okay. And you can now see that, that it's growing even longer. My husband's, but I want to show you, this is actually kind of funny. And I'm, I, I've always done this very transparently. I actually have dark hair that's starting to grow in past the white hair. Maybe I'm not going that's to be white. <laughs> you know, growing older is beautiful. It I mean, is. It really is. And, um, I, you know, I, I just, I just love I love the fact that we have such an engaged community, people that are asking such important questions. And Sandy, I truly want to thank you because you took time out of your crazy busy schedule. I know that you are on your way. Where are you going? Bermuda for the America's Cup. Woohoo! It's phenomenal. She's going to be around her peeps. 
you know, to, to put her feet back grounded on the on the ground so that she can be around her. I'm on the screen. People are saying I'm not on the screen. You're not on the screen. Oh, probably. Be, actually, you were the only one on the screen. Can you guys see me now? Can you see Sandy? Can you see me? Oh, I guess. Thank you. Yes, let everyone know. I'm so happy they signed up. I'm so happy. I love the questions. Keep sending them through you, however you want to do it. Absolutely. I'm here. I'm here. Any way I can support anyone, that brings me, that makes my heart happy. And now you know why I love her so much. Sandy, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. And thank you to all of our viewers and all of our experts that joined us in the show. You have lots of things that you can choose to do during the day. You chose to spend it with us. And for that, we are eternally grateful. I want to thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you next time on the next edition of The Little White Lie. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.